Hey, what's going on Weavers? Tim here again. And in today's video, we will be going over five knots that all beginner paracordists must master. So I've been doing this for a while and often forget that a lot of you are just getting into this hobby. So here is my personal list of five knots that are the absolute fundamentals of paracord bracelet making and crafting. These may seem simple and basic, but know that true mastery lies in mastering the fundamentals. Let's get into it. Number one, the Cobra Knot. Used for making the most basic bracelet, but also has uses in more intricate projects too. I'm going to take the gray cord, lay it over the two core strands. The lighter cord goes over top of the gray, behind the core, and out the crook on the right. A common mistake that beginners make is to not lead with the same strand. An easy way to know which side to cross over is the side that has the vertical cobra knot on that very same side. So repeat the same process based on which side that lead cord is on. If you don't use the same lead strand, it'll start to twist, which is the common mistake that beginners have. This is a good reason why you should use two colors when practicing and learning this knot. As a quick secondary tip, I like doing the clean finish at the end of a cobra knot bracelet, where I'm going to go to the back of the bracelet loosen the last knot and take the light gray strand and pass it under the last cobra knot so that both ends are at the back so we have no visible melted ends at the front of the bracelet. A minor detail but looks great especially for those of us who are detail oriented. Number two, the snake knot. Like the cobra, this knot can make a simple bracelet and also be used for a variety of situations. I'm going to tie a clockwise snake knot by taking the orange strand and making a clockwise loop around the burgundy. From there, take the burgundy, go behind the orange strand, and come back in the front and pass it through the orange loop and to the left of the burgundy strand. Pull tight and we have our knot. So this was a clockwise snake knot because you can tie the exact same knot going the other way. Something I didn't realize as a beginner and would often confuse me from time to time. For a counterclockwise snake knot, I'm going to take the burgundy strand and make a counterclockwise loop around the orange. Then take the orange and go behind the burgundy, come back in front, and through the burgundy loop to the right of the orange. So here you can see the difference between the two directional snake knots. And if you didn't have two colors, you might not notice the difference. But they do in fact look different, as you can see here, and can be confusing for those starting out and not realizing why their snake knots look different. Number three, the cow's hitch or lark's head. This is a really useful knot for when you use buckles for your bracelets. So the easiest way to do a cow's hitch is to simply take the midpoint of a cord, put it around whatever you're hitching it to, and then take both running ends of the cord and pass it through the loop and pull tight. Another way to tie the cow's hitch with a single end is to loop the end around, bring it over the base of the cord, from the left to the right, then go in behind the post and then under the loop you just created in front and tighten to form the cow's hitch. Technically, this would be a lark's head, but they're essentially the same knot, just tied differently if I'm not mistaken. If you want to do another hitch next to it for a double cow's hitch core, I'm going to take the left side cord, go around the post, and then above the base of the cord. Then go under the post, back around to the front, and through the loop just created. This is a common setup for a bracelet core. I'll have a playlist of how to set up the buckle cores linked in the video. Number four, the scaffold knot or sliding knot. This knot is great for making adjustable bracelets and also for finishing single strands. An easy way to tie this knot is to wrap two loops around your index finger have the running end end up on your left, and then remove your finger and pass the running end through the loops and then cinch up. 
You don't have to cross the loops over, but if you don't, just make sure they cross over as you cinch up the knot. Now if you tie this very same knot over a strand of paracord, you can make a sliding knot. So I did this same knot on a single strand of paracord, like so. And then with the other running end, you tie another sliding knot over the other side of the circle. And there we go, we have a simple sliding knot bracelet. The possibilities of what you can do with this are endless. Last but not least, number five, the diamond knot. Quite possibly one of the most used stopper knots, especially for knot and loop clasps. I like to tie this knot with both ends in between my fingers like so. I'm going to make a counterclockwise loop with the gold strand and place it on top of the green. I'm then going to take the green and go behind the gold strand, come around in front and go under the green section in the middle of the loop. We've now formed our Carex bend. Next, you'll notice the cords are naturally going in a counterclockwise direction. And here's where people get tripped up. I'm going to take the gold cord, go past the base green strand, and then go through the opening from the back to the front. Same with the green. I go past the gold base strand, and then go through the opening and gather both strands. From there, cinch up and we have our diamond knot. And there we have it, weavers, five basic knots that all beginners must master for a paracord crafting and bracelet making. I would say that if you have these knots down pat, you should be able to make a lot of bracelets with relative ease. However, practice makes perfect and simply working with paracord very often allows you to understand how it behaves and the best way to make nice looking well-made bracelets and crafts. That being said, I hope you've all learned something from this video, whether you are a beginner, intermediate, or a veteran of paracord crafting. That being said, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you want access to exclusive tutorials as well as our Discord server, feel free to check out my Patreon page, link in the video cards as well as down below. You can join for as little as $3 a month. You can also support this channel by liking the video and commenting. Also feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to check out what I have to offer on the rest of my channel.